pretty messy, right? This kind of impedance mismatch problem of writing SQL in a different language, writing SQL queries with uh, user-defined functions written in a different language, and it is, is not the easiest thing to wrap your head around. UDFs also complicate optimizations. You may give up something by um, writing a program that uses lots of UDFs. The final um, architectural difference that I just want to briefly mention is fault tolerance. This is one of the things that MapReduce advocates often sort of say, you know, MapReduce has this great fault tolerance model. I think it, it is interesting. MapReduce supports mid-query fault tolerance. So that means in the middle of a long-running operation, if one of the nodes crashes, um, MapReduce will um, restart that node and the system, the, the, the operation itself will continue and complete. So you don't lose, you don't have to restart the computation if one of the nodes crashes. Most database systems don't provide this. Um, and I think the reason for that is it really only becomes important is if you have lots and lots of nodes. So just to give you a simple sort of example, if you have one, if a, if a single node fails once a month, it takes one hour to run a query, the probability of having a query of mid-query failure when you only have 10 nodes uh, is about 1%. With 100 nodes, it's 13%. With 1,000 nodes, it's 75%. So as you get up to around 100 nodes, it sort of starts to feel like a 10% failure rate is the kind of thing that you'd like to uh, have the system automatically be able to mask and avoid. Um, if you look at parallel database systems, big installations of parallel database systems, they often aren't larger than 100 or 200 nodes. The largest teradata, parallel teradata installations are about 200 nodes. So this really argues, uh, and I think the reason for this is that, uh, as you'll see, that the MapReduce, our, our sort of belief is that MapReduce requires you to use a lot, a lot of nodes to do processing because its performance isn't that good. But uh, database systems typically can do the same amount of computation with less hardware. MapReduce also has a number of other uh, sort of fault tolerance features that databases that it doesn't provide that databases do, like transactions, disaster recovery. I think it's probably possible to bolt all this on the MapReduce framework if you really wanted to. All right. So now, um, I've, now that I've described the sort of architectural differences between these systems, I want to go on and describe the benchmark that we developed. So the goals for the benchmark were to understand the difference in both the loading times and the query times for common data processing tasks in these two frameworks. We tried to pick a collection of tasks that would either be good for one system or the other, or that we thought both should do reasonably well. And we ran this on a 100-node Linux cluster running at the University of Wisconsin. That was the biggest thing that we could find and had available to us. Um, uh, the software we used was Hadoop, uh, version 0.19 running on Java 1.6, um, a commercial parallel shared nothing row store from a major vendor, which we're just going to call DBMSX. Uh, this is, in this case, we configured this, this we sort of did the best job we could to make the system run fast. We used task partitioning. Um, we selected sort order sortings of primary keys uh, and secondary indices to be beneficial, as beneficial as possible for the workload. We enabled compression. Uh, it took quite a bit of manual tuning to get the performance of the numbers that we're going to show out of this. Uh, we also used Vertico, which is a parallel shared nothing column-oriented database. Um, the numbers number reporter from version 2.6. Uh, again, we enabled compression and selected the, uh, op the features in the system that would uh, provide the best, best performance for the workload we're showing. So, uh, the first... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Some feedback we're getting there. Uh, the, so, the first um, benchmark that I'm, I'm going to talk about is grep. The grep is simply looking for a pattern of characters in a set of input strings. Okay? Um, it's very, very simple. The reason we're using it is because it was the benchmark that was used in the original map newspaper published in OSDI 2004. Um, in, in this case, um, as I said, we're just looking for a, a pattern of three characters in a collection of input strings. Um, this is the field. We're looking at the field variable in the schema that I've shown here. Um, we have one terabyte of data in this case for this benchmark spread across 25, 50, or 100 nodes. Okay, so that means we have 10, about 10 million records in total, and we have somewhere between 10 and 40 gigabytes per node. And this is a benchmark we expect it to do to perform well on. Uh, there's no benefit to indices for this. Um, it's essentially just plain text processing. So let's start off by looking at load times. Um, so <clears throat> the uh, load times for are sort of unsurprisingly when in Hadoop, basically all you have to do in load for loading is just copy the data into the Hadoop file system. This is just a copy of the data. The database systems have to actually split. They have to do this sort of bulk load operation. It takes quite a bit longer. They're about four times slower for loading. Um, interestingly, if you look at how this scales up, you would expect to see if you're getting a, a sort of linear, if you're getting a linear performance increase with more nodes, you'd expect to see that these bars drop by half each time. Uh, Hadoop does manage to get the bars to drop by half. Um, we don't see quite the same performance benefit um, in the database systems. There's some sort of contention going on inside the middle of them. And I will note that uh, in response to this, the Vertica people have worked right, quite hard to improve parallel loading performance. I've been told that the initial versions, uh, that the new version of Vertica 3.0 corrects this limitation. So. Uh, all right, so the 
now let's look at query times for this growth workload. So the query times, um, again, we've got the three different systems on the x-axis, the total execution time on the y-axis, sorry, the three different uh, configurations on the x-axis and the different bars represent the different systems. Um, again, with, uh, so what we see with 25 nodes is that Vertica is about a factor of uh, three and a half faster than Hadoop, and it's about a factor of two faster than DMSX. Uh, the compression, the benefit here is due to compression. Vertica has several different compression methods that it is able to use, and it, it tries to select the best compression method for the data. Um, the, it turns out that there were some repeated field, there were some repeated values in the fields here, uh, and Vertica's run length encoding works very well for repeated values. It's able to directly operate upon that data. Um, as we scale up, we see that all three systems provide essentially linear scale up. Um, so that's good. Um, it means that we're getting parallelization out of the system. All right. Speed up, sorry. Um, all right, so now let's uh, go on to the analytical tasks. So these are tasks that are more sort of optimized for a database system. And we have a collection of, of tasks that are in the paper. I'm only going to talk about a couple of them now. We pick a very simple sort of what we characterize as a web processing scheme. So the, the, the data looked like, first of all, a collection of documents. So these are just meant to represent the HTML documents. Uh, we have about 600,000 documents per node. Um, in this case, the contents just, the, the document consists of a URL, which is a 100 character string, and then a blob of text, which is contents. Uh, the contents um, just embed URLs in them, and the total size of this is about 8 gigabytes a node. We also have what we call a user visits table, which just represents the user visits made to a, uh, which represents all the access is made to a given URL um, that's stored on a particular machine. So each machine has about, each node has about 155 user, million user visits on it. This represents about 20 gigabytes of data. Um, I haven't shown the entire schema for this table here. It has about 10 columns in it. The only two I'm going to use in the example query are the source IP and ad revenue, where ad revenue is meant to represent the amount of ad revenue generated by this visit to this page. Okay? The paper has a complete schema. I'm not going to show the loading performance. The loading performance is very similar to what happens in GREP. So unsurprisingly, again, the Hadoop framework, um, because it doesn't have to do very much loading work, is substantially faster than the database systems. So the first task that I'm going to describe, the, the, the first analytical task that I'm going to talk about is this aggregation task. Um, this is just a simple aggregation query to find the ad revenue group by IP prefix. So here IP prefix is meant to be a proxy for the sort of geographic region from which this query is coming. So suppose we want to compute the total ad revenue by geographic region. Um, so we run this query, we use the substring operation to extract the IP prefix. Okay, so um, this is a parallel analytics query in a database system. It just computes a partial aggregate on each node, merges the answers together to produce a final result, produces about 2,000 answers as a final result. I want to show you very quickly the new code. I know it's a little bit hard to read this. I just want to walk you through a couple of features of it. Um, so this is exactly the code that we ran, modulo some error handling that I had to cut out at the bottom of it. Um, there's a couple of interesting things that I want to point out. This is the map part of the job. So the first one is this comment here, which is split the value using value delimiter into separate fields. The third field should be our revenue. Okay, so this is an example of implicit schema embedded inside of the map job. Okay? Um, the other thing is that you see this record parsing and loading here. So we're splitting this input string up according to a collection of value delimiters. And we have to do exception handling to see whether if, in, in the event that this input string was not formed in some way. Okay, so what would Mike Stonebreaker say? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, this is, it's, it's pretty messy and ugly kind of code if you're familiar, you know, for, if you're coming from the sort of relational, relational perspective thinking about this. So, all right. Um, the reduced code I'm not going to show, but it basically just sums the revenue for each key that's assigned to the node. It's actually quite short and simple. So, I'll just give you the performance results for this query. Um, I, I'm, along the x-axis here, I've got the number of nodes, um, and each, in this case, each node has the same amount of data on it. So as we go to more nodes, we're adding more data to the system. I'm just going to show you bars for the three different systems. So, here, um, Hadoop is something like a factor of 15 slower than Vertica, and uh, it's about a factor of 4 to 5 slower than DBMSX. Okay, as we scale, um, as we add more nodes, the performance stays essentially the same. This is good. This is what you'd expect. This means we're getting a linear scale up. We add more nodes to the system, and the performance stays the same. We're adding more data when we add more nodes. Okay? Um, so all systems show linear scale up. Uh, the database system here performs better, and the reasons for this are pretty straightforward. There's none of this parsing overhead that's in the map job, and there's compression. The database's compression works very well. Hadoop does actually have compression built in, but we found that it did not help performance. 
That's something we've been talking to the 